Kyle Lukoff writes books for kids of all ages. Before becoming a full-time writer, Kyle worked at five bookstores in four libraries for three schools as two genders through one intersection, people and books. Let's find out more about Kyle's story. Kyle, come on in. Hi, Kyle. Amber. Should I call you Ms. LeMay? Oh, uh, you can call me Amber. You can call okay. me Amber. Or, or uh, Mrs. Lookoff. You know, that, that could be arranged as well. <laughs> okay, Kyle, you're a writer. When did you start writing? Well, I, when did I learn how to write? Or did when did I try to start getting published? Because I think that was like... When, no, when, when did you think about, I, I, I'd like to write? I think it probably, the best answer is probably right after college. I was kind of crazy, as a lot of 22-year-olds are, and I was working at Barnes & Noble at the time, and I decided to start writing just a short story on the back of scrap paper that I found when no one was coming to the information desk. And I wrote a short story, and I liked it, and I didn't want to say goodbye to those characters, so I wrote a second chapter, and then I was like, well... I can either have one short story or a full novel, but no one wants just two chapters or something. So I decided to finish it all writing longhand, all at Barnes & Noble when nobody was talking to me. And I kind of tried to get that published, but I had no idea what I was doing. And also no one wanted it, which was a good thing. Um, and then it wasn't for another seven years or so, I think in 2012 is when I started trying to write a young adult novel and started to research how the publication process worked. And then that didn't go anywhere. Uh, and then I decided to focus on writing picture books in 2015. And here I am. Well, when you mentioned Barnes and Nobles, I figure it, it was quite a while ago. True. I got hired in 2000 when I was 16. Um, and then I worked there on and off up until I decided to go to library school in 2010, I think. Okay, so, so you okay. went to work at Barnes & Noble. Was it just because it was a job or you wanted to work in a bookstore? I, well, I was 16, so I applied to everywhere. I really wanted to work at PetSmart because I wanted to be able to like feed the hamsters. And the first place that hired me was a local, a regional like, Taco Bell knockoff called Taco Time. So I got hired there. I worked there for one day. And then I got a call from Barnes & Noble saying that they had hired me. And I said to my mom, no, I think I'm going to stay at Taco Time. I really like working at the cash register. And I would feel bad quitting because they just hired me. And for one of the, maybe the first time, maybe the second time in my life, my mother put her foot down and she said, no, you are not working at Taco Time. You are going to work at Barnes & Noble. And I quit Taco Time the next day. And then I worked at Barnes Noble for a decade, and now I have books on the shelves there. So she was right. Well, why do you think she made that insistence? I think she knew that I would be happier working with books than deep frying burritos at a fast food chain. Um, I've always been a bookworm. Reading has been my only hobby forever. And I think she just had a sense that it was a better fit for me. What were some of your earlier uh, favorite books or authors as a child? Oh, gosh. I have really clear memories of loving the Kevin Hankus books as a little kid. Uh, Jessica and Julius, the Baby of the World. Um, I liked a lot of the older picture books like Harold and the Purple Crayon and Alexander and the Terrible, Horrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. When I was older, I mostly read the Babysitter's Club books some boxcar children, and then I read a lot of Tamara Pierce's The Lioness books. So there were four books about a girl who wanted to be a knight. So she cut off her hair and like bound her chest flat and ran off to the palace to learn to fight with swords. Um, and I read those books. I really liked a story about a girl pretending to be a boy. Uh, it didn't click for a while, but I read those books over and over and over and over again. How did your mom perhaps realize those were the type of books that you liked? The one about the, the girl wanting to be a boy? No, not really. I mean, they were also fairly standard, like girl power, 90s genre things. So I don't think anyone really thought that there was anything strange about that. You worked at Barnes and Noble. What was your job after that? Uh, after Barnes and Noble, I had a couple... Did I have jobs after that? I had, I went to law school for a minute uh, in 2007 and then I dropped out. And then I got a very strange job working for a very strange friend of mine 
where we were kind of like the middlemen in a translation company. So people would send us their birth certificates and then we would send those to like a translator and then we would charge more money than we paid the interpreter, which was not exactly a scam, but wasn't the most <laughs> fair business practices, I guess. I don't know. Um, all of us were trans men and we all tended to work like in our boxers. Sometimes there was, you know, uh, amateur videos on the TV that we'd have to turn down when someone called. There were a lot of cats. Um, and after a while, I just didn't really like working for my friend. So I quit and I went back to working at Barnes and Noble. And then after a couple of years, I decided to go to library school. Where did you go to library school? Queens College. It's fine. What, what does one learn in library school? <sighs> That's such a great question. I don't really know. Um, I took classes on what's called reader's advisory, which is helping people find books that they want to read, which I had already been doing for a decade. And I took classes on reference interviews, which is helping people find information, which I had also already been doing for a decade. I'm sure that a lot of people have a great experience in library school where they learn so many things to prepare them for their future careers. I cannot say that that was me, but that might have more to do with my experience going into it than the program itself. Is there a degree associated with that? Well, it's a master's, master's of library and information science. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. So you, even get uh, a that, you could be well, Dr. I, library. Is that something you would uh, pursue? No. No, no. <laughs> When did you start writing full time? I I gave no so I was working as an elementary school librarian and I gave notice in like late February or early March of 2020 which was quite a time to decide to quit one's job. <laughs> yes. I finished out the school year virtually and then I just never went back. Had you been writing books? Had you had a book published by then? Yeah, by then, my first book came out in 2018. And the reason why I decided to quit my job and try writing full time is because it was a combination of, I had taken the fall of 2019 to go on tour with my book when Aiden became a brother. So I went all over the country, reading it to kids, and I was able to approximate my, my salary, basically. And then that combined with the fact that I just gotten a really nice advance from my first novel to write to see, which is this one um, meant that I also knew that I had some income coming in that was not related to my traveling. So I thought, well, between these two things, I can probably make it work for a couple of years. And I've been doing it ever since. Tell us more about that first book. Ooh, well, my uh, the first book that I showed you or the first book that I wrote? The first one you wrote. The first book that I got published is... Uh, storytelling of Ravens. I was going to grab it from the pile next to me, but I know that we can like show the cover on the screen, so I don't have to. Yes, it yes. Is this weird little? It's this weird little idea that I had not long after I graduated college, where I thought it would be fun to take the collective nouns of animals, like a uh, pride of lions or a pot of whales or a school of fish, and tell little stories using the collective noun in a creative way. So I wrote those down. It kind of sat in my files for, you know, eight or nine years. And then I finally found an agent who wanted to represent me. And then she sold that book to a publisher and it came out in 2018. It's cute. It's not especially groundbreaking, but it got some good reviews. There's kids who really like it. And it shows my appreciation for wordplay and language nerditry, I guess you could say. So, you aimed your writing at children from right, right from the start. Mm, that isn't exactly true, but I first started trying to be professionally published under my own name in a career making move writing for children. I had other more amateur publications prior to then, both under my real name and a pen name. All right, that um, that book about the ravens uh, came out. Did you finish up the uh, series of the animals and their their families? Uh, it's not it's not a series though. It's just the one book. Okay, just the one. Okay. Um, yeah. After that, what happened? What book? Uh, after that, I sold my second book called Explosion at the Poem Factory. 
which and, and, we can and, see on the screen. Yes. And that's an idea that I got from college. It is about a poem factory that explodes. It's also very nerdy. And I like doing school visits with that one because I do little poetry workshops centered around it. And then after that, I wrote When Aiden Became a Brother. And that is the book that one could say kind of put me on the map. Okay, tell us about the, the purpose of that or what the, the, the plot of that is. Yeah, that one is about a young transgender boy helping his family welcome a new baby. So it is about him, you know, coming out, telling his parents about himself, and then about him trying to make things more welcoming for his new sibling before they even show up. Oh, nice. Now, do you use the same illustrator for all your books? No, and that's also not my decision. It's always the editor at the publishing company that oh. chooses the illustrator. So mm, all of my books, with the exception of the series, are illustrated by different people. And I've been really happy with all of my illustrators so far, and that has to do with you know, the the skill of the editor and the art director and the illustrator themselves, but it's not something that I have any control over, really. Okay, let's go to that novel that you, uh, you held up earlier. Tell me about that. Uh, my first novel is called Too Bright to See, and it is about a kid named Bug who lives in a haunted house, but that house has always been haunted. That's not really a problem, but then when Bug's uncle, who is a drag queen, dies a new ghost shows up and we have to figure out who this new ghost is and what it's trying to say. Her name sounds, is, go ahead. The uncle's named Roderick, but his drag name is Anita Life. Oh, that's very nice, very nice. Do you see anything um, from your books, especially this one being bought for a movie or a series? That I would love that. I also know that Too Bright to See is being adapted into a musical, like a stage show, which is cool. We are trying to sell some of my picture books as uh, an animated series, but who knows if that's going to happen. But I don't know how that side of the business works. I just feel like if someone wants to do it, they can talk to me and I'll probably say yes. But I, I'd love to audition for I Need a Life. I would love to have you. I'll let you. I'll set. I'll send you the casting call. All right, that would be great. You go into schools. Um, how how frequently do you go into schools and read your work? It used to be much more frequently. Uh, in 2019, like I said, I went all over the country. I had school visits, so many. And then even when COVID hit and things turned virtual, I still found myself to be pretty busy. But now with the whole book banning thing and teachers and librarians being accused of horrible crimes just because my books are in the library those have dried up significantly which is challenging financially and also i just know that as someone who's won as many awards as i have won i've won two newberry i've won sorry i've won two stonewalls i have a national book award f honor and i was the first trans person to win a newberry honor um, I've made a lot of like best of lists and, you know, the 10 best books this year, that sort of thing. Um, a person at my stage in their career should be much busier than I am. And I understand the reasons why I'm not. Have you taken any personal attacks or received any personal attacks from your work? Mm, nothing overwhelming, like some email, some like awful emails, some nasty messages, some terrible things that I'm tagged in, but nothing so far that's been unfortunately out of the ordinary for any like queer or trans person who's in any way in the public eye. Have any of your books been outwardly, outwardly banned? Oh yeah, my picture book, Call Me Max, was on stage with the governor of Florida when he signed the Don't Say Gay bill. There's like a picture of him pointing to it. Well, that's great advertising. You would think, but that book still hasn't made me any money. It still <laughs> hasn't earned through its advance. R write, write a book about uh, some child who attacks a governor or something that uh, run, <laughs> runs, <laughs> runs for governor and, and defeats someone like that. Oh, that would be great. You, you can give me some credit on that. I will. I'll thank you and I'll either dedicate it to you or thank you in the acknowledgements. <laughs> what are you working on now? That's a good question. What am I working on now? Um, right now I'm finishing up edits for my third novel, which doesn't really have a title yet. We're trying to come up with one, but it comes out in, in about a year. And it is about, it's my first novel with the Jewish character. 
and it's about a 14 year old trans kid fighting demons and making friends along the way. How long does it take you from, let's say, your initial idea to a book of a book to get it published? Every book is different. Um, I mean, obviously, the shorter a book is, well, actually, that's not necessarily true. Sometimes the shorter a book is, the less time it takes to write, but that is not always true. To Write to See, my first novel, took me about four years to finish, and then another two years, two and a half years to get published. But that's because I kept giving up halfway through. Whereas my novel, Different Kinds of Fruit, I wrote it in six months, and then it came out not. I think it came out like a year and a half after I finished it. So that one was much quicker. Um, I have a picture book out called Awake Asleep. And I wrote that one in one evening. And it came out less than two years later. Whereas when Aiden became a brother, it took probably a couple years for me to get it right. And then it came out about a year and a half after that. Um, it sounds like you must, be working, you must be working on several books at, at the same time. Not necessarily. The way that publishing works is that it's kind of staggered. So like you can write a book and finish it and it can sell and then it might not come out for another 18 months to three years. And in those 18 months to three years, you can write a whole different book and then sell it. And then it might come out in 18 months to three years. Um, I usually try not to work on multiple projects at once because I don't like getting the voices in my head confused. I made that mistake once. I'm not going to do it again. Is there something that you haven't written about yet that you think, oh, someday I want to tackle this subject or I, I want to write about this? I have one more novel to write after the one that I'm working on now. And then once that one is completed, I am desperate to write a novel for adults. I think it'll be a nice vacation. I think it'll be easier because I get to use all the words in my vocabulary instead of just some of them. And I get to draw on all of my life experiences instead of just the ones that are appropriate for children to read about. I'm very excited. I bet you're going to be ready to write that one by then. Well, mm -hmm. Kyle Luckoff, thank you so much for joining us tonight. Fascinating story about your journey being a writer. Thank you for joining us. Thank you.